All right, so today I'm going to be working on rebuilding this Yamaha 700 triple here. Um, what wound up happening with it was I was riding it and then it suddenly seized up. So if we look down here, it looks like the uh, on this center cylinder here, the crank um, bearings went bad in the bottom end there and seized up that center cylinder there. So these two guys are still good, or at least they look to be good. And uh, I have a new crankshaft, a new... Uh, uh, cylinder and a new piston as well for that for that centerpiece so the engine's gonna have to come out in order for us to do a complete rebuild so first things first I'm gonna take off this exhaust um, probably you know remove all the carburetors and all that we'll have to remove this uh, this clutch here and see what else needs to come off in order to pull this engine out so I have the carbs off here or at least dismounted and the exhaust everything like that so you can see everything's pretty much open here now for me to take off the engine mounts um, but next here we're gonna go ahead and take off this clutch so in order to do that here's a 20 a 22 millimeter socket and uh, there's a plug on the side of the slide there we can pull out and just slide this guy right in and then once you do that it should come right off with an impact pull that guy out See that there? And then in order to actually get the clutch itself off, it's gonna still be locked on there. Um, you have to get a special tool. So there's a clutch pulling tool. And this should go right in here, thread right into the ed end of that clutch. And we should be able to use an impact to pop this guy off. And there you go, popped right off. Pull the tool out. And clutch is off. Now that that clutch is off of there, we're gonna remove all the bolts that mount the actual engine to remove the mounts as well as the, uh, well yeah, remove the, the mounts and then dismount the mounts from the frame and then this guy here just looks like a cross member we'll pull that out and we should be able to pull the engine kind of out over and out all right so as you can see i got this engine completely removed um, everything disconnected everything like that one thing is this is going to spill a lot of coolant out of it when you take that bottom coolant line off when it comes to the oil pump either you can take the whole thing off of the engine like i did or just disconnect those lines but either way if you just Disconnect the lines. Make sure you know where those exactly where those go. And uh, you know, if you take off the actual oil pump itself, make sure no dirt gets in there. So I still have to cover that up. But yeah, pretty empty in there. Slid out pretty easily. Um, we look at the engine here. You can see that this thing is super dirty, super greasy. I guess that's why they call it a greasy triple. But um, yeah. So next step here is obviously I don't want to. Um, start tearing this thing apart with it so dirty because I don't want a ton of uh, dirt and everything getting into the inside of the engine there aside from this one where uh, we're gonna have to clean that out anyway since the bearing went bad and there's gonna be metal bits in there but um, yeah so what I'm gonna attempt to do now is clean all these services and tape them off that way no water or anything can get in there um, I may install the oil pump back on just so no dirt or water or anything gets in there um, yeah and then you know tape everything off spray it down with some uh, cleaner and go go ahead and wash it off and to clean all these surfaces I'm using super clean on a paper towel just to you know make sure that the tape can stick well um, this stuff works great anyone who's ever used this stuff before knows how good it is but if you haven't used them go check them out so I got this thing pretty clean here wasn't get it wasn't able to get it as good as I would like it but without a pressure washer um, there's only so much I could get so definitely a lot better but uh, now that this thing's all clean, we're gonna go ahead and keep stripping it down. So we're gonna take off all these uh, jugs here. We're gonna pull the pistons off and then we're also gonna pull the flywheel and I'll show you how I do that. So first we got a 24 millimeter socket here. I should take this off. That comes off easily. And then we're also gonna go ahead and take off the three screws that hold this. Uh, I'm gonna call it a starter cup on here. 
All right, so the rest of the flywheel gets removed with something like this. Um, this kit was only like 20 bucks from Harbor Freight, so they're pretty cheap, and I believe you can also rent them for free from AutoZone. Um, but yeah, so I was able to get the flywheel off, and then I took the uh, screws out that hold this magneto in place, and then look up top here, I got all the cylinders removed, and so now we're going to go ahead and remove the pistons, and the way you do that, there's a little ring inside of here that hold the uh, the wrist pin in place. So you want to try and grab the edge of that retaining clip, pull it out, and hopefully have it not go flying because that happens pretty often. And then you should be able to slide this wrist pin out and remove the piston. So now with those uh, pistons removed, we're going to go ahead and split the case. And in order to do that, we're going to do it. We have to loosen these screws in a specific pattern so you can see these numbers printed on here. Those correlate to each individual screw. We're going to want to reverse this pattern, so start at 16, then 15, 14, 13, and so on. And uh, loosen them about a quarter turn or so each, um, and then keep doing that until all of them are loose. So now I have the two, these two case halves split here, and uh, we can get a bit better look at everything. So we come come over here, we can see the problem with this engine. This rod bearing here in the middle um, pretty much is seized up you can see the bearings are falling out um, so there's a bunch of metal shards and stuff like that in that center crankcase there so i have a new crankshaft we're going to be installing um, but in the meantime we're going to go ahead and clean this off as best we can um, pretty much especially this this center one because there was so much metal in there and there probably still is um, and then we're also going to go ahead and change the water pump seal while everything is out. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take off this bolt here and that impeller should slide right off. So with that impeller off and then this guy, which just slides right off as well, I'm going to go ahead and try and remove this uh, back plate here very gently by sticking a flathead screwdriver in there and prying it off. Now with that guy off, made sure that the... Uh, the old and the new seal the same number and they're the same size. Now I'm going to pick that seal out with a set of picks. Got that seal installed there, just cleaned everything out nice and then press it in by hand with a deep socket, push right in. Trick here is you want to lubricate the outside of it with a little bit of uh, WD-40 or PB Blaster or something like that. And then the inside, I always like to put a little bit of grease on the inside of the seal. That way it doesn't wear out right away and uh, helps prolong the life of the seal. And then for this uh, top plate here, I did reuse that, and then I just put a little bit of gasket dressing along the edge there because it looked like that was similar to what was already on there, and it'll probably help it seal. So I went around both of these mating surfaces here between the two case halves with some Scotch-Brite to get rid of all the, uh, the old gasket material and residue. That way it's nice and clean, and it should seat well. Um, and then I also went ahead and washed the two case halves in some hot water and dish soap so they're nice and clean, or at least the inside is. But this is one of the most important steps is just to make sure everything is as clean as you can possibly get it. You do not want any dirt inside of here, any any metal, no nothing. You just want it as clean as you can possibly get it. So now that all that's done, we're about ready to drop the crankshaft in. All right, so I got this crankshaft in. Um, everything lines up good, lines up where it should be. You can see everything is aligned here. So you wanna make sure you get these alignment or these dowel pins all in these grooves on this side of the case here as you can see there's one on each bearing and then these seals they fit in the grooves as well and then this end piece has that ring that slides into that slot there same thing with the seal on this side slides into that groove right there so everything looks like it fits well um, I rotated everything a few times and nothing's binding up there so we're good with that um, and then the other thing you want to make sure you do is make sure you put assembly lube or oil everything I'm using this stuff but just enough to where all the bearings aren't dry for when you first start it until the oil actually starts circulating um, but yeah so now we're ready to put these two halves together but before I do that I'm gonna clean off the surface one more time with some super clean and I'll put the gasket maker on this is the stuff I'm using, Moto Seal Fuel Resistant Gasket Maker. But we'll put a thin bead of that on and torque everything down. So I got those two halves put together here. Um, pretty much torque them in the same pattern as I mentioned before with the pattern labeled on the bottom of the engine. 
And then the torque specs for this are 115 inch-pounds first and then 20 foot-pounds. So you want to go do all of them once at 115 inch-pounds and then go back over it again at 20 foot-pounds. Now that that crank is in and these two halves are together, the next step here is going to be to put these uh, bores back on, bore, bores and pistons. So I'm just going to throw these pistons on the uh, crankshaft here and then go through and install the bores. So I got these guys on here. It goes pretty smoothly. Uh, the bottom of these bores have a taper on them so that way you can um, compress the rings as you slide the bore on top. And then you just want to make sure you line the piston rings with the uh, pin inside of the groove there on the actual piston itself. Uh, but other than that, pretty much just make sure that everything is lathered in assembly lube or oil or something like that. And uh, yeah, and then if you're cleaning out these bores too, make sure you don't use paper towels or anything. Um, you can use coffee filters, that's what I usually use, but just don't use a paper towel because it, it'll um, start to come off and, and get inside of the, the home there, and you don't want that. So with all those installed, all we really have left to do is throw the cylinder head on, and then we'll put on the reed valves and start putting it back in the sled. So when installing the cylinder head, these bolts are first going to get torqued to 97 inch-pounds, and then to 17 foot pounds and you can see the pattern here and then i also forgot to mention these uh jug bolts or i guess the nuts that go on the studs here these get torqued to 20 foot pounds and you tighten those in a star shaped pattern one last thing i'm doing here before i put the engine back in is replace all these oil lines because um, these are pretty old and they get old and brittle so i just put new ones of these on here um, just use some fuel line. This is 764 inner by quarter inch outer. And you can pretty much buy this by the foot at most local hardware stores. And just throw it on there. But make sure you get the clear stuff. That way, I mean, I guess these ones don't matter as much because it's on the bottom of the engine. But uh, on some of the other ones, you, you want it to be clear. That way you can tell when there's oil going through and when there isn't. That way you can tell if you have a problem. But yeah, super easy, and uh, you know, the last thing you want is one of these oil lines going bad on the bottom of your engine. you got to pull the whole thing um, to go and change it again, so just do it now. All right, so this thing seems to run pretty good. Everything went back together pretty much the way it came apart and uh yeah it seems to run great i let it run for a while to get rid of a lot of that uh assembly lube i put on so it's smoking pretty good but uh it seems to run great now so that's going to be pretty much it for this video thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe